Hey everyone, it's Stephanie from Scrap and Create. We're working on page eight, which is a twist pop um, page. And I we did this on page one and I made so many mistakes. Hopefully um, I'm gonna get this one constructed and it's gonna be more clear than page one. I referred you to page eight over and over again because I kept making mistakes. So let's start with what we need to cut out. You're gonna have three pieces. You're gonna have the card piece itself, which is 12 by six, 12 by six, you're gonna score it at the six inch line along the 12 inch side. And it's gonna open up and down just like this. So one of these, then you're going to need a three and seven, eight inch wide by 11 and seven eighths across. So it's 11 and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. And it's a wonky size because the cut aparts that we're going to be placing on here fit, actually that's not one of them, fit perfectly. And um, normally this would be four by 12 and then you would just score it at three, six and nine. But I wanted this to be perfectly matted around those so I adjusted the size ever so slightly. So if you like a wider border, four by 12 will give you about an eight inch border, and this gives you about a 16th inch border for each one of these four panels. So again, this is three and seven eighths by 11 and seven eighths. This is the pop mechanism piece, and it is three and three quarters by 10, three and three quarters by 10. Lay the three and three quarter inch by 10 inch piece long ways into your scoreboard, and you're gonna put a tick mark at three and seven, and rotate it and do again three and seven. So just leave those tick marks for now. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna turn it vertically and you're gonna score it in half, which is, oh, it's three and three quarters in half. What is that gonna be? My brain's not working. So, that's going to be 1.875. So you're going to score it at one and seven eighths is about right. But instead of doing that, since it's not exact, it actually goes into the 16th inches, which my scoreboard doesn't. It needs to be narrower than, than the pop mechanism that goes on top. So I'm just going to fold it in half lengthwise and, and uh, create my own score line. At some sometime in the future, I'd like to get a scoreboard that does um, metric on it. But even the metric ones, I you can't get much smaller than a an eighth of an inch between each score line. Just that's just the way they're made. Okay, so I did that. So the next thing, um, once you've got it scored in half, is you're going to line up these tick marks and score an X into it. Okay, and I'm just gonna do it directly onto my mat using my score tool and a ruler. Okay, that's one way, now we're gonna do the other one. Okay, and now we're gonna crease these. Now we're going to go the other way. Okay. So let's get our three pieces. So we've got our display panel, our pop mechanism, and our bifold right here. Okay. So these elements are going to come together to make the pop flip. So when it's on its side, you're going to pull these two scored edges in, like so, and then you're going to flatten everything out. And I can see my measurements are off slightly because this is three and three quarters and not four. So these score lines should have been, they're gonna be off a little, so I'm gonna force them to be re-scored. None of this is gonna show, by the way. I 
I think I probably should have scored these a little, yeah, just a little bit. Maybe instead of at three and seven, maybe come in an eighth of an inch. It just needs to lay flat. Okay. With these two tails tucked in. Okay, there we go. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to attach one of these sides to this bifold. So we're gonna find the center line here, which is at three inches, because it's six inches across, so we're gonna put a little tick mark at three inches. We're gonna add tape to these triangles, both sides, front and back. Now this is page eight. So this bifold is gonna get installed center on page eight. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So let me find my center line, which is gonna be at five. Five, and then the center line for this is going to be at three. And then we're just gonna adhere this. And, and you'll, it'll make a little more sense in a second. And the reason why I'm doing that is I want this to be one mat. So we're gonna hide part of the pop mechanism, the card part underneath the mat that goes on the base page. Okay, let's line these two dots up. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is apply this to that. So the arrow is gonna to point to the center section. I'm gonna straighten this up on my grid. So I'm also looking to make sure that these look parallel to the sides. Okay, so we're gonna leave the tape on here for now uh, because we're gonna put our mat in first, okay? We're gonna hold all this together with some magnets right here and down here. So let's put those in. The magnets need to go as far to the corner as possible because once we get our, our pop um, display in, it's going to be wider than, than the uh, mechanism itself. And I learned that on page one. <laughs> so you want these to be as far over as possible. And I hope that's good, but we're gonna test it in a second. I'd have to trim a little of the button off. Okay. Okay. So 
So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to open this up and then we're going to mark where to install this. So take your accordion and close it like so and then open it up like that. So you've got a seam and a, a score line toward the center. It's going to go install center. Ooh, I can see I got this in pretty crooked. I might have to go straighten that out. But we can go ahead and install this. This won't change. Okay, so once you lay it in and you're basically putting this corner to this corner, then you're gonna draw a line. One, one side down and one side up. So you're going to apply adhesive to these two corners, and that's what's going to hold this in place. But I think I'm going to straighten this out first. Let me look at my scoreboard and see how bad it is. Yeah, you can see I definitely came in at a curve, so I'm going to straighten this out, which means I have to use some undo, so it's going to take a few minutes. I'll go ahead and get that started. For such an easy page, I don't know why I'm having so much trouble. <laughs> <sighs> all right i'll pause and i'll be back in a bit okay everyone sorry about that um i just did some undo and then straightened this out so when you're all finished what it should look like is this score line should be flush with the top of your pocket page um and it should you know, be flush. This is 10 inches, so is your pocket page. So, sorry, I got it in a little crooked. It must have shifted on me when I closed the lid. At any rate, that's in now. So the next thing I want to do is make sure that I've got the magnets in a place where they're going to adhere on the opposite side. So in order to do that, we need to open this up and go ahead and glue down our pop mechanism. Okay, so I am going to put tape on both sides. This one's going on the lower, this one's going on the upper. I'm going to go ahead and move the, remove the tape on both sides. Okay. All right, we're going to fold this back just like how it was when we made the lines. We're going to line everything up. This should be flush with the edge of this panel and fit right snugly into the corner here on both sides. Looks great. Okay, now we're going to open this flap and this flap. Burnish everything in place. And there we go. Now that it's all together, I'm going to burnish it a little bit more. And so one of the reasons why I wanted to attach this was to make sure that my magnets are outside the edge, and they are. But I'm actually further out than I need to be, so I'm going to slide it in a little. So it probably would have made sense to add the magnets after we get these panels in. So I'm just going to draw a little line here on both sides so I know my magnets have to go um, centered between here and here. So I'm going to move it in a little bit more. And it'll, the only reason I'm doing that is it just makes it easier to cover it um, with a designer paper. I don't have to worry about um, the edge of the magnet holding the paper away from 
the black cardstock base. It's kind of a mess, sorry. again. Yep. That's going to be fine. Okay, I'm do the same thing over here. Hmm. Can't seem to get a hold of it. Okay, and I'm also going to cover it with some fat tape to smooth it out a little bit. And then we'll put the bottom ones on. Okay. Okay, let's get some designer paper down. Okay, so we'll let's find this mat. Be right back. All right, here is the paper I'm going to use here. So let's go ahead and get um, this backing removed. Okay, now we're ready to remove this backing. And then we'll close the whole mechanism and it should function properly. I'm going to add a little glue here too. Just to secure the corners here. My here they are. The cards that are going to go on the inside. Okay, so 
we're going to place these cards inside. And I kind of like them in that order, so that's what I'm going to do. <clears throat> This is from the 12 by 12 cut apart page. This is from the patterns and solids. I forgot to mention that, sorry. These cut aparts are just a little bit smaller than the ephemeras. And that's why I decided to use them. I selected um, this tea party to go right here and it needs to be turned down just a tiny bit. That should do it. I'm going to add some ink and we'll put that down. really close to the edge so I'm going to roll it in just a little bit so it doesn't stick out under the designer paper. This is one of my favorite uh, cards. I like the, the banner. I think it's really pretty. Okay. Okay, I still have to line up a couple more bits for the final cover. Okay. There we go. Okay, so I am going to have two layered pieces and a small ephemera card as a design feature on the cover, and I'll be right back. Okay, you know, I think I forgot to tell you guys this on page one, but this is three inches wide, it's seven and a half inches tall. And then I'm gonna cut, um, either, I don't really, I, I'm gonna call it a fishtail, but it's a chevron off the bottom of it. And then of course, we're just gonna mat this like so. This is gonna go on top of here. So I gotta go look at my first one and see how far up I came. And I'll tell you what that measurement is too. Doesn't surprise me, I try to keep things simple. So I came up one inch from the bottom. So you're gonna come up one inch, one inch from the bottom to cut your fishtails. So the first thing we wanna do is find our center line, which is one and a half. I'm gonna put a mark at one and a half. And then um, we're gonna come up one inch. And that's a half inch. That's one inch. Okay, so we're going to use that tick mark and a ruler to cut our fish tail. Actually, I'm going to cut straight down first. Ah, I hate it when that happens. My paper is sliding under the ruler. I did it again. 
happened twice. Maybe I should freehand. There we go. Okay, there's my fishtail. I'm going to ink everything. Oops, I got really heavy there. This is my last page today. I can tell I'm getting tired and making mistakes. Okay, now I'm going to add this. You know what? That looks a little wide, so I'm going to take a sliver off. To do it. Okay, I'm going to put a small mark here. not straight at all. <laughs> oh my. Oops, I need to come up a little here. Oh, it's time for new scissors. These are so dull. I'm bending my paper. Okay, now we need to find an ephemera card and some cardstock to go on the back of this. So I'm going to go look for a six by six piece and then some sort of a design feature to put on top here. So I'll be right back with you guys in just a minute. Okay, everyone, I'm ready. Got, oh, sorry. I've got this blue six by six that's gonna go here. directional but it doesn't hurt I could have cut that a little bit more okay now we're gonna add our fishtail I'm just eyeballing it extra glue here okay and then this is the ephemera card I selected and I put two pieces of chipboard on the back so it's going to be elevated dimensional love it and it's just going to be centered on the lower part of the banner whatever visually appeals to you and it's centered left to right yay That's it for page eight, yay! I've got a couple other things to, to cover, but assuming I've got some bits, I'm gonna probably cover the backside of the fishtail with what, I don't know yet. Um, but even if it's black, I'm okay with that too. That's it. 
Okay, thanks everyone.